Let's have a look at this question that came in your uh, UPSC exam. The question is what uh, show that the ordinary demand curve will have a greater demand elasticity than the compensated demand curve. Now, I've gone ahead and written one complete answer for you also. You can have a look at that. But before that, let me just explain to you what you're supposed to write then you can write it in your own words also. So just try and understand this. See, when we are talking about the ordinary demand, basically we are referring to the demand curve, which shows the total price effect. And we know that the total effect is substitution effect plus income effect. This is how we can write the total effect. When I talk about the compensated demand curve, then basically, it only shows the substitution effect and no income effect whatsoever. Now, just consider this example. Consider that I have this as my initial budget line and initially point E is the point of my equation. Consider that this is good X and Y. And supposedly there is a decrease in the price of good X. When the price of good X will decrease, we know that the budget line will pivot. And how? Outwards. So let's just pivot our budget line outwards. And let's just draw a final, let's say, indifference curve with my equilibrium at point E dash. The aim is to break this equilibrium in two parts. So this is my total effect x x dash i want to break this effect in substitution and income effect i can go through either approach either i can take marshallian approach or i can take hicksian approach so marshallian or hicksian I would like to go via the Marshallian approach. So in the Marshallian approach, I will go ahead and pass a budget line through the origin such that the original bundle is affordable. So what am I asking you to do? E is your original bundle. Pass a budget line through E. Your original bundle is affordable but at the new prices. So original bundle at new prices. This is what I'm doing. The line should be parallel. Original bundle at new prices. This was my original bundle. And then for this budget line, I will draw 
the best possible bundle. Let's say it is at E double dash. As I go from E to E double dash, consumption of good Y will decrease. X will increase. So this is a substitution effect. This is substitution effect. As I go from E double dash to E dash, consumption of both will increase because both are normal goods. This is income effect. Now, let's go ahead and let's draw the demand curves. In the first demand curve and second demand curve, initial bundle is X only. Initially, the price is three. When the price decreases, one demand curve should only show the substitution effect. So, which means that I must increase from X to X dash. Only the substitution effect. So, this will be my demand curve. The second demand curve should show the total effect, which means I should go from X to X dash. This is double dash. It should show this. So which means that this is my other demand. This demand curve goes from X to X dash, which means it shows the total effect. This goes from X to X double dash, which means it shows the substitution effect. So this is compensated. This is ordinary. And clearly, this is flatter. This is flatter. And this is steeper. So this has more elasticity. You could have shown this through Hicksian also. Hicksian would have meant that no new line was required here. And you would have shifted such that utility would have remained the same on the new prices also. So on the new budget line. So something like this. I want to draw a line which is parallel to the original budget line right uh, to the new budget line so i am talking about new prices something like this it should be a parallel line and then i am going ahead and saying like this this is my button here so from x to x double dash Utility is held constant. Utility is constant. You are just increasing good X and decreasing Y. So it's substitution effect. This is point E to point E double dash. And then from E double dash to E dash, you're increasing both X and Y. That's an effect. So you can use either Marshallian or Hicksian. Hicksian holds utility constant. Marshallian holds purchasing power constant. But the aim is to show these two demand curves. Let's look at the answer. This is what I have written. Try to squeeze this in a little more than what I have written here. So, you know, of course, we know that we practice always in our, you know, UPSC copies where we have that format already. So let's just try and do that. The ordinary demand curve illustrates the movement along a given demand curve Summarizing total quantity of good demanded at each possible price. So I've given the definition of the ordinary demand curve. 
that it shows the total effect right changes in price induces both substitution and income effect which lead to movement along the curve then i have given definition of the compensated demand curve compensated demand curve illustrates movement along indifference curve for alternative prices so because i have written a long indifference curve it means that i am going to use my fixier method they are constituted by holding utility constant and exhibit only substitution effect so just see here holding utility constant along the ic and talking only about the substitution effect so i have defined both that this gives the total effect this gives the substitution effect now let's go ahead now i have given this mathematical formation you may have gone only with the diagrammatic approach but when you give one equation it tells the examiner that you know the concept very well so it's always a good idea to go ahead and give the mathematical equation wherever possible whether it is is curve lm curve export import stutsky equation budget line ics one mathematical equation always tells the examiner about the way that you look at economics so i have just used this mathematical equation explanation is in my lecture please go through that once and after using this mathematical equation which is also available in snyder i have tried to go ahead and write that in terms of elasticity let me take you through that once so so this is my stutsky equation since the question is asking about elasticity i know that we need to convert this in the elasticity form before we do do that i know that this part how expenditure changes when price changes this is just my x through my shepherd's lemma so i've just written x here and instead of expenditure because expenditure and income are equivalent instead of e i've written i here right now this x that i got here i have just tried to divide this throughout this is very close to price elasticity what's the formula of elasticity px by x into del x by del px i can multiply throughout both sides by px that is what i have done and when i do that this is what i get as the elasticity of x this is the elasticity of compensated and here if you look at it this is px into del x by del i can i convert this into income elasticity i can why not just multiply income here divide by x and multiply x divide by i this will actually cancel out each other right but now from here this part becomes my income elasticity and the remaining part it becomes px into x by i so this is the share of your income that you spend on good x so you get this so this becomes your final equation in terms of elasticity that the ordinary demand elasticity has two components elasticity of compensated 
and the income elasticity. Is this clear? Okay. Let's move one step ahead now. So then I showed the same thing through the diagram. I showed that this is what I've explained to you already that the ordinary demand curve it is more flatter and therefore more elastic and this is steeper and therefore less elastic and I concluded it with that. The ordinary demand curve is more flatter than compensated demand curve due to the fact that it shows total effect instead of only substitution effect and hence it is more elastic than the compensated demand curve. Just one thing here. This is additional. This is not required. I just wrote this so that you read this through. For any other kind of question that may come related to this. So this part is not required for the answer. What does this part say? It says that the compensated and uncompensated elasticities, it can be equal to each other if one of the condition is met. So imagine if the share of the income on good X is zero, then, you know, these two are equal. Or if this is very, very small, then these two can be equal. So this is what I've written. The share of income devoted to good X is small. Or imagine that if income elasticity is zero, then also the two are equal. Or it is very, very, very small, like 0 0.0001. Then also the difference will be very small between the two. So if the income elasticity of demand is small, or the share of income devoted to good X is small, which means basically this product is small, then the two might be equal to each other. This is not required in exam. So what is a good answer then? A good answer may have one line definition. A good answer may have, must have some mathematical equation even if it is not derived, even if you didn't know this entire part and you would have given this at least, it should have been fine. Then it should have graphical explanation, rather derivation and finally it should have a conclusion. This is how you can write a good answer. Okay, we'll meet then for the next question. Thank you.